Welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time we're going to delve into the world of Arduino microcontrollers. We're going to do so using this, the Uno R4 Minima, which was released in June 2023. And after we've looked at this board's specification, we'll move on to writing and uploading Arduino code. Right, here we have our Arduino Uno R4 Minima, which sells for about $20 or €18, Euros, and I paid £18.60 here in the UK. So, let's bring in Stanley the Knife and uh, open this up, just cut through the uh, label like that, and uh, have we got in? I've struggled with these before, haven't I? Getting it from both sides, deary, deary me, there we are. And uh, finally we get in, and in here we find, hopefully, what have we got? Oh, there is instructions. It's a paper, that's exciting, and more things there. And this is, of course, the board itself, uh, which, uh, as we can see, comes clipped into a, a plastic base to protect it when not in a project. But I imagine it unclips quite easily. It does. There we are. So uh, let's put it down and take a closer look. At the heart of the Uno R4 Minima lies a 32-bit Renesas microcontroller unit, or MCU, which has an ARM Cortex M4 processor clocked at 48 megahertz. The MCU also contains 32 kilobytes of RAM, 256 kilobytes of flash storage, and 8 kilobytes of EEPROM. In case you're wondering, both of the latter are non-volatile and retain data when the power is switched off. However, EEPROM can be erased at a byte level, whereas flash memory can only be erased in blocks. And on Arduinos, the flash memory is used to store programs, or what are called sketches, whilst the EEPROM may be used to store small amounts of data, and is therefore also referred to as data memory. The Uno R4 Minima retains the form factor of the previous Arduino Uno R3 with a header on each long edge. Here the longer header offers 14 digital input-output pins, including support for SPI on pins 10 to 13, as well as PWM or pulse width modulation on six of the pins, which can be used for controlling things like servos. And note that the reference voltage for all pins is 5 volts. The smaller header offers six analog inputs with up to 14 bit resolution, with pin A0 also offering a 12 bit DAC or digital audio converter output and pins A1 to A3 providing an operational amplifier. If all this were not enough, it's also possible to use these analog pins as additional digital pins. And along from the analog pins, we have power and reset connections. On the main short edge, we find a reset switch, and then a USB-C port that offers USB 2 connectivity, and is used to program the board, and which can also power it with a 5 volt input. However, the Uno R4 can also be powered from this barrel jack or from its VIN header pin, both of which accept an input of 6 to 24 volts. With our Uno R4, I therefore purchased this battery box that takes a 9 volt battery and which will allow us to run the board standalone. Other connectivity includes a CAN or Controller Area Network Bus, as well as UART an SWD or Serial Wire Debug header for debugging, and this ICSP or In-Circuit Serial Programming Connector which duplicates the SPI or Serial Peripheral Interface from a digital pin header. We also have various LEDs, including a power LED here and a user-controllable one over here. Finally, it's worth noting that the Uno R4 Minima has got a real-time clock and that it offers USB HID, or Human Interface Device, functionality. And what this means is that the board can emulate a keyboard or a mouse, and so it's possible to use it to send keystrokes or coordinate data to a computer via its USB port. And so, there we are, the Uno R4 Minima, a great Arduino board for beginners, and indeed a great microcontroller for 
everybody. As you may have noticed, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, but if you need it, there is a UNO R4 Wi-Fi model available, which also includes a cool LED matrix. And I may take a look at this alternative R4 in a future video. Well, here we now are on the UNO R4 Minima pages of the Arduino website, where we find fantastic documentation. And this includes a setup guide, a getting started guide, as you can see, but there's also a very detailed data sheet, which contains lots of very, very useful information on the board, all the pinouts, all that kind of stuff. This really is uh, extremely useful. And uh, we've also got a cheat sheet over here, which is also very useful. But for now, we're going to go straight to the software page where we can download the Arduino IDE or Integrated Development Environment. And I'm going to download for Windows 10 and newer because uh, that's what I'm running here. And as I've just purchased a piece of hardware, I'm going to click on just download like that, save the file. I'm not going to do the survey right now, not in the middle of a video. So we'll just let the file download complete. And if we go across to the folder it's in, oh look, it's waiting for us. Here is the file. Let's just execute the file and install the software. And I've learned the hard way it works much better if you go for anyone who uses this computer. And it's also worth pointing out, it does take quite a while to install. And there we are, it's finished. So let's just uh, run up the program. And as you can see on the first run, there's various things we have to approve and various bits of software, bits of drivers, things like that it needs to install. But with everything finished, it looks like everything's finished down here as far as I can see. Yes, everything looks happy. Here we are in the Arduino IDE. And this is where we can write programs or what in Arduino land we call sketches. And when we've written the program, we need to verify it using the icon up here, which will compile and verify the code. And then when everything's OK, we can then upload code to our Arduino board using this arrow, this upload control. But before we can do any of this, we need to install on this computer what's known as a board core, which contains the files needed to compile and upload sketches for our particular board. So I'm now going to bring up the board manager by clicking over here. And if I now search for a Uno R4 like that, it comes up and we can click on install. And there we are, we've successfully installed our required board core. So let's close down the board manager. Next, to work with our board, we need to connect it to the computer. So uh, let's take the board, which I put back in its little plastic base, and plug it in like that. And uh, as we can see, the power LED comes on. And also this LED here, the user with controllable LED, this starts flashing. And we'll explain why it's flashing in the next part of the video. But back in the IDE, we can now go to a select board drop down, and we can pick our board like that. There it is. And it's now displayed here as connected, and also down here, bottom right as connected as well. Finally, I'm going to go to File and to Preferences like that. And to make things easier to see on video, I'm going to change the font size here to 18. I'm also going to change the theme to a dark like that. And then finally, I'm going to change the file location to something I think is a bit more sensible. And with that done, there we go. I think as a final bit of tidying up here, I'm going to click here, bottom right, to toggle off the bottom panel. Right. If we wish, we could now write a new sketch using the provided code as a basis. Or we can go to File and Examples, because lots of examples are included for us. It's a really fantastic system. And I'm going to bring in a particular example file called Blink. And uh, guess what? This is a sketch which flashes the onboard LED. And if we scroll down beyond the comments, we can see the actual code, which starts with a setup, which initializes a digital pin as an output. And that pin is referred to here as LED built in. And this is predefined for us as a digital pin internally connected to the onboard LED. And as this varies between different Arduino boards, it's nice this is predefined. Anyway, beyond setup, we then have a loop to actually flash the LED, which, as you can see, uses digital write to turn the pin high. 
And if you hover over something as we are doing here, we get fantastic help. This really is a very good IDE. Anyway, having turned the pin high, we then have a delay for a thousand milliseconds, one second, turn the pin low again, another delay, and then we loop this on until the end of time. And if we look across to the board itself, as you may recall, the internal LED is flashing on and off once a second, and this is because the blink sketch is pre-installed on most Arduinos. So if we actually uploaded this particular code to the board, it wouldn't really demonstrate anything. We'd replace a program with an identical copy of itself. We get the same result. So what I'm going to do here is to change these delays. I'll change that to a 2000 to uh, two seconds. We'll change this to, I think, um, 250, a quarter of a second. That'll be sufficiently different. And we'll go on to save this with a save as, as something else. I think I'll call it um, EC Blink like that. There we are, and things clearly happen. And uh, that's now obviously happened. There we are. And we'll now verify this code. We probably don't need to, we haven't changed it very much, but we will do through a normal process. We'll compile and verify by clicking that button. It's done that, everything seems to be okay. And now we get to the moment of truth where we're going to upload our new code. So I'll click on the upload button like that. And uh, it starts to compile the sketch again and get on with it. And as we can see on the board itself, the LED has now changed to being sort of going up and down, fading up and down. And then it seems to have finished now. And yes, look, the LED is flashing, but it's flashing differently. The pulse is very different. Two seconds on, quarter second off. That is what we just wrote. So we have succeeded in programming our Arduino. Greetings. I've now wired up a breadboard with five LEDs and current limiting resistors to the Arduino, specifically to digital pins two, three, four, five, and six. So let's now write some code to bring the LEDs to life and in the process to learn more about Arduino programming. Here in the IDE, I've actually written two sketches, the first of which is very similar to the previous Blink code and just blinks the external LED connected to digital pin 2. As we can see, initially pin 2 is set to be an output and in the following loop it is turned high and then low with delays of half a second in between. In case you're wondering, Arduino sketches are written in a variant of a C++ programming language. So for example, if we look at the syntax in this sketch, we can see that a double forward slash is used to begin a one line comment, semicolons are used as terminators at the ends of commands, and curly braces are inserted to surround the body of functions and loops. So let's now verify this code before uploading to the Arduino. And in fact, let's put an error in it. Let's get rid of the terminator of a semicolon at the end of that particular delay command. And if I now press verify, there we are, we've got a compilation error. And if we just uh, get rid of that and uh, go down here, we can see, yet it expected to see the semicolon before a digital right there. It's highlighted the line. And uh, there we need to put the semicolon back in like that. And we'll now verify again, it should work. Again, it's compiling the code, C++ is a compiled language and everything this time is okay. So we can now with confidence upload this code to the Arduino, let's do it. Uh, like that, and uh, what's going on there? The uh, internal LED has uh, stopped doing its normal thing, it's going up and down, code is going across, and uh, yes, we've now got a flashing LED. It's very exciting indeed. But you cry, what about all the others? Well, do not fear, because over here in the IDE, I've got our second sketch, and what this initially does is to set digital pins two to six as outputs. But rather than doing this with five separate pin mode statements, it more efficiently makes use of a for loop. And in C++, the basic syntax for a for loop looks like this. So specifically what we're doing here is to set up a variable called a to be an integer with an initial value of two. And we then set the condition that the loop will continue as long as a is less than or equal to six. And finally, we have an a plus plus, which will increment the value of a after the expression has been evaluated. 
And so, as this loop runs, it will execute a pin mode command for pins 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, setting each to be an output. Moving on to the main loop, we have a very similar for loop going on, which here will in turn set each of our pins to high, wait for a delay of half a second, set it to low and move on to the next pin. And I've already verified this code, so let's upload it to the board. Very exciting. Here it goes across. And uh, is it all going to work? Hopefully it is. Looks like things are happening with the little LED down here. And when it's all completed, yes, we have our running light. Things are working very nicely. And it's worth pointing out that the Arduino here is working as an entirely independent device. So what I'm going to do now is to just uh, zoom out the camera like this, just to take you out a bit so you can see it's sitting there all by itself. And what I'm going to do is to disconnect it from the computer like that. It's gone. And here I've got the battery box, the 9 volt battery box I showed you earlier. It's got a battery in now. So I'm going to connect this down here like that. And if I turn on the power, yes, we have our working LED. Shall we zoom in again just to be exciting? There we are. It's working. We have our Arduino as a fully functional standalone device that we could carry around anywhere we wish. And indeed, we could even take it to the park to show our flashing LEDs to some ducks. And they'd probably be very interested and also want to know how to use an Arduino to read sensors, control motors and servos, and all kinds of other stuff. But that will have to wait until another video. Modern microcontrollers present all kinds of maker project possibilities. But what would you do with an Arduino Uno R4 Minima? Please let us all know down in that comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,